Rich Clarkson's journalism career began as a sixth grader when he started Aero Science, a small newspaper that covered the Lawrence aviation scene. Though the paper only had a circulation of 35, he managed to land his first big interview. So I, I did the interview and thanked him and went home. And so sitting down at the dinner table that night, my father asked of what I did. And so I told him who I'd interviewed. He says, you interviewed who? I said, well, he was in town visiting some friends or relatives or something. And so he stopped by the aeronautical engineering department. He said, did you get his autograph? I said, journalists don't ask for autographs, which is why I don't have Orville Wright's autograph. By the time he was in high school, Clarkson was selling photos of KU basketball games to the Lawrence Journal World, the Topeka Capital Journal, the Kansas City Star, the Associated Press, and other publications. He continued his studies of photography at KU, where he took one of his most memorable images during media day with the KU basketball team. It was Wilt Chamberlain's sophomore year. He had a very high waist. And so as, as we finished up the session, I thought, I could show his height better if he were to sit down in one of these folding chairs. So I got the folding chair out, and, and Wilt was, I mean, he had to be available to all of the press, but... I mean, he was fine to work with. I mean, I, I must have had him for 30 minutes doing all kinds of things. So I said, could you just sit down in your chair and, and maybe tie your shoes? Uh, sure. So he did. And, and that's the kind of picture that, because the knees are so high, it, it, it really starts to give you a, a sense of, of how large and how tall he really was. Clarkson sold photos from that session to Sports Illustrated, then an up-and-coming magazine. He started doing regular contract work for SI, with his images eventually gracing the cover more than 30 times. Clarkson has covered 56 NCAA Final Fours and eight Olympics. He is a master of gaining behind-the-scenes access from such coaches as Larry Brown, Adolph Rupp, Barry Switzer, and Bob Knight. I covered every kind of one of those stories for SI or my newspapers or whatever, like I was a Life magazine photographer. I'm going to cover everything from a daybreak all the way to when the sun sets and, and get everything which included all the stuff behind the scenes and over the years I think that's of, of all the books and the projects I've done I've always tried to talk coaches into letting me behind the scenes practice locker room before the game locker room at halftime to see all of the other kind of things that go on in and around sports not just the action pictures which I find to be far more interesting and far more useful and, and far more revealing than just the, the game action. But Clarkson can't be pigeonholed as a sports photographer. He spent 25 years during the 50s, 60s, and 70s as photo editor of the Topeka Capital Journal and later was director of photography at National Geographic and assistant managing editor of the Denver Post, in addition to his contract work with such magazines as Time and Life. And I think when you look at the body of his work, and even now when you look at the things he's doing, he's telling stories. And he's doing it in a visual sense. But he talks about making pictures, telling stories. He doesn't talk about, you know, shooting this or shooting that. And even when he talks about like something like the Final Four, all that excitement, he talks about finding the stories in it. You know, not just that this was one great picture. But he talks about what was the story going on at the Final Four. If it's Mario Chalmers shot, if it's some other drama, or, you know, maybe it's just um, looking at the crowd or looking at one particular person. But he always manages to tell a story, and I think that's why it endures. For as respected as he is for his own photography, Clarkson may be just as well known for the photographers he's mentored through the years, particularly at the Capitol Journal. Some of his hires there have gone on to win Pulitzer Prizes and secure leadership positions in some of the country's top magazines. Rich expected photographers to be journalists. He expected... Uh, photographers to think like editors. He expected photographers to uh, think about stories. The pictures were never an end to themselves. The pictures were about storytelling, uh, about reporting on our world. Clarkson gained a reputation as a hard edge and demanding boss, but those who worked for him developed a deep admiration for their mentor. About 30 of those former Capital Journal photographers came together in 2010 for a reunion honoring their former boss. And it's kind of lately, you know, people are looking back on it and, and saying, uh, this is probably the best photo department in American newspaper history. And, you know, at the time I kept saying, my God, this is the worst staff we ever had, you know. You really need to get at it. 
the story was that that if you uh, if you went to Topeka and worked for Rich for a couple of years, you could then write your own check. Well, not quite, but <laughs> but it. When you look at the legacy of the people who, who did just that, uh, maybe a bit more, um, it wasn't writing your own check, but it was the this, this stepping stone uh, into a, a different world of photography than what we might have had otherwise. Clarkson has continued his role of mentoring through a series of yearly workshops, and he has kept close ties to the KU School of Journalism, where he recently donated funds for a multimedia gallery to showcase student work. He also has served on the Board of Trustees for the William Allen White Foundation. Rich is a great friend of the school. Um, whenever he's in town and whenever we can persuade him to come to town, he comes in, he talks to the photo class, he talks to the other classes, he meets with students, he mentors students. Um, he usually provides scholarships for students to go to his summits and so he supports students financially that way. Um, he keeps an eye on students you know, who are really, really interested in um, photography trying to open doors for them still. You know, that, there's a point in there that when you have a good experience someplace, you want to prolong it. And the way I prolong it is just keeping involved with the J School and, and the university. So it, it's, I guess, self-serving. Clarkson now owns Rich Clarkson & Associates in Denver, which photographs for the NCAA, the Denver Broncos, and the Colorado Rockies, among other clients. He's still telling stories by making both friendships and images. It's neat to find how many people whose lives uh, I have crossed are such good people. It gives you a little assurance that life may have been okay. <laughs>